Hi everyone, I am Bharat Kumar. Today we are going to see a topic on design of industrial buildings. And first, what is industrial buildings? The example of industrial buildings may be found in steel plants, automobile industries, light and utility process industries, and thermal power station, warehouse, assembly plants, and storage garbage, small scale industries, etc. These buildings require large column free areas. The buildings of industrial buildings actually requires uh, more column space, so RCC structures cannot be used more often. The interior col columns and wall panels are often eliminated to keep are kept to be uh, minimum. Adequate headroom for overall uh, head traveling crane may be required. This is an example of industrial building an airport hangar in which the column free area is more and it is supported by a uh, column of high section in inside which the airport can be um, part. First, what are the required things to for a design of industrial building? First, we should plan and design in, in, uh, industrial building and following things are to be considered. The selection of roofing and wall material and selection of way width and selection of structural framing system. The roof stress also should be uh, selected and purlins, grid and sag rods. Basing systems should resist the lateral loads and granitic girders, column base plates and the foundations should be selected. First step is to select the roofing material. The roofing material choice also, also affects the design of industrial building. The type of roof deck, deck must also be selected which affects the industrial building. The type of purlin used and the purlin spacing should be of um, prescribed level. The reflection of secondary structural members are also to be selected. The roof pitch and drawing are the required things. The roof weight also affects the gravity loads design of the roof system and in the case of seismic calculation, the lateral load design. Next is the selection of wall material. The following items should be considered while selection of wall material. First, the cost should be of effective, effective and the interior space requirements, aesthetic appearance including the color, acoustical and dust control, maintenance, ease and speed of correction. The insulating properties must also be considered. The wall material should be of fire resistance. The wall system should have impact and design of grids, wall brazing, even the member and the foundations. And next comes the aluminium decking or cladding. The three basic components are steel or aluminium deck, thermal insulation and member. I, this is a sheeting and insulated board and purlin connects the both top card of the roof stress. This is an example of aluminium sheet of different colors. The typical profile of roof, deck, roof decks. And narrow, the types of roof decks are narrow roof deck, wide and intermediate. In the narrow roof deck, each rib is approximately of 150 mm center to center. The maximum width of a rib is 25 mm at the top and 10 mm at the bottom and the thickness of rib is 37.5 mm minimum. Next is a wide rib. In this, the rib is approximately 62.5 mm at the top and 30 mm minimum at the bottom. And the thickness is same as a uh, narrow rib deck. Next is intermediate rib deck. In this, the maximum thickness of the top of the rib is 44 mm and the minimum is 12.4, 12.5 mm. And the center to center is approximately of 150 mm center to center. Here, yeah, this is an example of standing seam roof. In this, the, during the construction, the lower panel, upper panel and sealant are kept in a position. And after the complete that seam, the sealant is bent into the position to hold the roof. The advantage is metal roofing. Metal roofing has uh, several advantages such as durability. The standing seam roof handles the thermal shock through its concealed sliding clip system. The clip system allows equal amount of movement in either direction and it is a lightweight material. The metal roof panels weigh a relative modest of 7.32 kilo, kilogram per meter square and it is easy to install, easy to maintain and the weather, right, weather tight and reliable. Calvinist sign sheet. Galvanized sign sheet has 8 coagulation that is 75 mm width and 19 mm deep per sheet. 10 or 11 coagulation, 75 mm and 19 mm deep per sheet. The length is approximately 1.8, 2.2, 2.5, 2.8 and 3 meter. The width available are 0.75 and 0.9 mm, 0.9 meter. The thickness available are 0 0.63, 0 0.8, 1 and 1.25 and 1.6 mm. Next comes the asphodus cement sheet. These astra sheets are banded in many countries due to the risk of uh, lung cancer. In this, the width of the overall width of the sheet is about 1050 mm and the laid width is 1010 mm width and, and the thickness of the sheet is about 48 mm and the 
uh, details of slide soap is about 40 mm minimum. Next is fastening details of sheeting. In the sheeting, the fasteners are uh, fasteners are important things. The bolt diameter used is approximately 8 mm for the galvanized sheet, and the distance between this hook and the sheet is about 100 mm, and the end lap is 50 mm. In the ridge distance is about 125 mm. The sheeting and the clip was placed in such a way that the, it, it should uh, access the wind and the glazing is placed and the clip is placed to the sheet. This is given for the uh, rail, uh, drain water to drip into the ground. Next is top roof equipment. The top roof equipment such as mounted or suspended HVAC equipment, fans, heaters with AC units or solar panels must be properly fixed either weight account or for, the, for in the design. Next is selection of bay width. bay width. The base are either braced frame or unbraced frame. The bay width is selected in such a way that with, if the building is without cranes, 9 mm bay is most economical of the choice. A 12, 12 meter bay may provide economical for the large square buildings. For buildings with cranes through the bay width in range of 4 mm to 8 mm provide economic. Plus uh, spans may range from 10 to 25 meters. Next is braced frame. This is a uh, typical structure of a base frame. In this, uh, the wall bracing are in the given in the side, and this is a, uh, these two are wall bracing, and this arrangement is a truss, and this is a bracing in the front, and this distance is called a bent, and this is braced bay, braced bay, and these arrangements are called purlins, and these are the ridge strip and roof bay, uh, roof bracing eave strip, and this TB represents. Um, BB represents the truss bottom cord in the braced bay and A to G location of the truss. C is the column, CC is the corner column, CB and CG is the column of braced bay in the gable. DL and DT is the diagonal and bottom cord level and longitudinal and transverse section. ES is the used truss, PB is the truss top cord in the braced bay, T is the tie in the bottom cord level. And this is a uh, cross section of N bay and bottom cord bracing. In this, this is a column uh, bracing and roof stress is indicated. And this section is a uh, braced column with the uh, eye sections. If the building is lengthy, every fourth or fifth bay is braced. In a braced structure frame, stability is provided by bracing in the three mutually perpendicular planes. Braced frame are efficient in resistance of load and do not sway. Functions of bracing. The functions of bracing is to mainly to transfer the later loads from frames to the foundation. The longitudinal bracing on each longitudinal length provides stability in the longitudinal direction. The gable bracing provides stability in the lateral direction. The tie bracing at the bottom cord level transfer lateral loads of the stress to the end of the gable bracing. And this is an example of braced frame example. And method to reduce uh, bending moment in the column. When the wind load is applied, the bending moment is usually high in the column. For this purpose, we use a knee brace, which reduces the bending moment in the column. The, this is a uh, structure we use of knee brace, which reduces the bending moment in the column. And the bending um, and the uh, bending bending moment diagram comes like this, which reduces the bending moment for the wind load. Unbraced frame. This is also known as portal frame. It is also called as pre-engineered building. In this, there is no bracing is done, and this is called a rafter continuous beam and a gable wall and corner post. This is a clear span and this is a column, wall, wall system, eave height, roof system, ridge and the roof purling. This is an example of portal frame with, where there is no bracing. This is unhatched portal frame. In unhatched portal frame, there is no connection between this column and the frame. This is in a hatched portal frame. In hatched portal frame, there is a connection between the eaves and the column. This is the main difference between unhatched portal frame and hatched portal frame. And this is a different types of writer. Solid web beam, which includes the piping and ducting system and monorail system. And this castellated beam, which includes piping, ducting, monorail system inside the beam, which has a several hollow sections. And this is lattice-sized frame, which has piping, ducting inside the frame. And it, it is also like braced frame. And this is the end of lecture one. The rest of the design in the industrial building will be continued in the lecture 2.